This is the Electronic Church of God, Arizona, presenting the Lord's Care Ministry, provided by James Bird, narrated by Forrest Grote. Thank you. Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is the sixth work day of the week, the day that our calendar calls it Friday. Actually, it's a preparation for the Lord's seventh-day Sabbath. The calendar also says we're December 28th of the year 2012. Brethren, I hope you all have your parachutes ready because they say in about three days we're going to fly off the cliff. I hope you have enough parachute ready to be able to withstand the shock. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth, day 362 of the year 2012. Today's little study is about continuous conversion. Continuous conversion. And brethren, I suggest you take a pad and paper, write chapter and verses down so that you'll be able to go back, study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button below this video, brethren, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to pick up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. Okay, let's get right on over into continuous conversion. And to do that, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. And it, where it starts out, it says, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. These words of our Lord refer to our initial conversion. But we should continue to turn to God as children being continuously converted every day of our lives. If we trust in our own abilities instead of God's, we produce consequences for which God will hold us responsible. When God, through his sovereignty, brings us into a new situation, we should immediately make sure that our natural life submits to the spiritual obeying God's word given to us through his spirit. Just because we have responded properly in the past is no guarantee that we will do so again. The response of the naturalist to the spiritual should be continuous conversion. But this is where we often refuse to be obedient. No matter what our situation is, God's spirit remains unchanged and his salvation unaltered. But we must, as it says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24, put on the new man. God holds us accountable every time we refuse to convert ourselves. And he sees our refusal as willful disobedience. Our natural life must not rule. God must rule in us. To refuse to be continuously converted puts a stumbling block in the growth of our spiritual life. There are areas of self-will in our lives where our pride pours contempt on the throne of God and says, I will not submit. We defy our independence and self-will and call them by the wrong name. What God sees as stubborn weakness, we call strength. There are whole areas of our lives that have not yet been brought into submission, and this can only be done by his continuous conversion. Slowly but surely, we can claim the whole territory through God's Holy Spirit. O oh, Savior, I commend to you these whom I have injured, or spoken against, or failed to help. I pray for those who have treated me wrongfully, and despectively, I intercede for my dear ones, for all sufferers and mourners, and for our saints everywhere. In John chapter 8 and verse 12 we read, I am the light of the world. 
Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Brethren, read that over John chapter 8 and verse 12 over again. And please replace the light with knowledge, and it will be much more enlightening to you. The Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Brethren, in God's Word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the Word of God. Do you make void the Word of God? Are you preparing for God's seventh day Sabbath? Are you using that for today? Oh, yes, you have to go on with your work, but you can prepare yourself, your mind, and everything else it takes to be to prepare for the seventh day Sabbath. That's Lord's Sabbath. That's not my Sabbath. That's not some denomination Sabbath. That's the Lord's Sabbath, and he says so very strongly. And you're supposed to congregate with like believers on that Sabbath. If you're within range and been able to do so, some I know cannot do it. They have to have a church at home. That's great. Maybe you can do it with your wife. You're congregating with a like believer. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation with the Father and the Son, get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you so you can more fully understand their word. Let it give you the strength and the power to walk the way of life that the Lord has set forward. And while you're on your knees, brethren, ask him to, for forgiveness for following the tradition of men. Also ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the, un and the understanding that the Lord has given to you in that love letter. And that letter is your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great, wonderful day. Yes, it's still winter here. I would much rather it be on the nice sunny days of fall. But we just have to wait for it. In the meantime, keep your fires going and stay warm. See you tomorrow. God willing. Bye for now.